Hello everyone, I'm Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video today is going to look over Activity 5 as it is when I made this video, the C++ vector class being used to set up a very simple slot machine to figure out the mathematics behind the reels and the payouts for a specific game. So I have, you've already, again, you've already seen all of this. So the Village People game is a more complicated version of what we're going to do. Five reels, 20 or 30 or 40 symbols. You can imagine how many different combinations there could be. So the mathematics can be tricky, but, you know, but as long as we write a computer program, the computer can do it for us in a matter of moments. And the same goes with this. There, there's 23 times 24 times 25 symbols, 13,800 possible, uh, possible stops that you can have on this. And it'll, it would take quite a while. I mean, it's not like you can't do it, of course, but it would take you quite a while to manually go through and figure out the probabilities of this. And then after you've done all that, what if someone wants to change it? And so you just grumble, grumble. And the more changes, the more grumbling you do. So now, you know, with modern technology and computers, it only takes a couple moments to change things around to what you want. So these are the three reels. I'm just going to steal them if, if, if it will let me. If I can... Since I simplified this and moved this over, let me just get a second here. To, I guess I have to steal them from over here like this. There we go. And bring it back. Uh, don't you love it when it doesn't do it? There you go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set everything up over here. And I'm just going to call LC and R just to keep it simple. Give me, just give me a moment here. This is the hardest part of everything right here is the getting it formatted and doing whatever here, and I need an SDD vector of integer values to, to maintain all of these, all of this data, and I, all of this again, and the reason why all of that is moving is because there's no semicolon at the end of any of these things. And so, I, I know I'm flying through, what did I do? There we go. This is what we've got going. We have our, 20, our three reels with different values of symbols on each one of them. That's the first step. And so the first thing I want to do with this is to make sure I go through and I know that I've done the correct number of spins. And so the, the, for, uh, the range-based for loop in C++ for something like this is absolutely awesome. If I say for every int A and L, oops, and then I say for every int B as a part of C, and for every int C that is part of R, just go ahead and increment the spins. This is just the, the first step is just making sure that everything is coming out like I expect it to. And I'll just say this, I'm expecting what, 13,800 or something like that. And let's see what I get. And I probably, did I, do I have a system pause? Yes, I do. So, yep, so there it is. There's my 13,800. So this, this range-based for loop will iterate for every int A, for every int B, for every int C. If you really want to, you can go ahead and check it out and just have it print something like this. And once you see this, let me just let it finish. And then there, there's all the 13,800 possible answers. This, this went over line. I don't know why the tab boundary is so strange on this, but anyway, but you can see that these are all the combinations. Oops, there we go. The 13,800 different combinations of you know, real values. It's pretty cool. So 132, 133, 135, 134. So then the final step of, of the first part of this is to say, okay, I have a 132, and I have a 133, and I have a this, I have a that. And so the question, why is that? Let me see if I can get it. Well, that, would, that looks kind of cool. Oh, okay. Anyway, I digress, of course. Let's see if I can bring it back one more time. There we go. Now I guess we're back where we started. But anyway, now if I have a 1, 3, 3, if, the, if, this, if, this is a, if A is a 1 and B is a 3 and C is a 3, is that a winner? I don't know the answer to that yet. The answer is no, according to our rule set. We have our, uh, let me find it right here. We have this, these guys right here. These are the payouts. And so I'm going to show you a, a dirty way to do it, and then some, you won't know how to do this just yet, depending on where you're coming from, your experience level, especially in this course. But we will cover maps at a later date. I'll show you how to set up a simple map to do this once I've set it up the, the dirty way. 
And I'm just going to say, just forgive me for what I'm going to do. This goes against my normal formatting standpoints, but I'm just doing this as a, just as a, you know, a quick how-to. And so we're going to have 50, I think there's 15 different ways we can win. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 14 different ways we can win. And so what I can do here is just basically set up a, just a bunch of different if statements. And I can say if A is equal to, let me just see if I can find it. A is 2 and b is 2, and c is 2, and I need to keep track of how many credits I'm giving away. My wins started at 0. So I can say if all three of three, these three things happen, I add 7 to my total. And again, this is just because this is a hacky way to do it already, but I have no problem with this. You're just looking for a quick and dirty solution to this. So if, if a is 2, and b is 2, and c is 2, win 7. And so you just basically do this 14 times. Increment the spins and whatever else is going on. Let me see if I can bring this down a notch so we can actually see this while we're trying to set this up. I can bring, I can move this down too as well. And let's just make sure we did this right here. So let's see, two, 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 three. You can definitely triple speed this thing. Let me just, you know, it, it's just tedious. There's nothing to it other than that. And I'm just going to go, I'll go down. It's faster if I go down. Three, three, one, two, three, four, five, four, two, three, four, five, that. I have a one, two, three, and I have a five, five, one, and a five, five, five. Now this is, the second thing of this is two, three, 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 five of those. Um, two, three, four, five of these, and then a two, and a five, and a five. Oh my goodness, two, three, and then two, three, one, two, four, five, four, one, two, three, five, three, one, and five, and then the winds themselves. 7, 10, 2, 2, 3, 4, 15, 5, 5, 2, 6, 2, 2, and 70. And now if I run this, I did this right. Hopefully I did. And then I, there we go. We should get whatever it was I wrote. I don't know. The, I don't remember the exact number right here at the moment. And I will say wins divided by static cast to double number of spins. And then multiply that by 100. And I get just a syntax error. And I get 87.971%. Is that what I'm expecting? Let me see, I do not recall. Oops, I do not get that. So I must have just done something slightly off. Let me check to see where I'm at and I'll let you know. Oh, HTML and CSS. What I did miss here, maybe you saw it, maybe I didn't. I, th I thought there were 15 and there are. I just missed this one right here that if A is one, B is one, C is one, it pays out two. And when I fix that up with everything else in here, now you get the complete results that you're expecting as you see. 89.0, okay, whatever, <laughs> 12,284 out of 13,800 is 89.0145%. So I did promise I would show you guys how to do this. So in this case here, I, my, I said that about this is I wanted to set up a map instead of just having a whole ton of crazy if statements. So now I basically converted this into a key value pair. The key is 111, the value is 2 for the win. And so, and you can see the errors. We're going to get rid of this code in a second here. So 222 two, two is a 7 and so forth and so on. And so you're like, well, you know, like how do I, you know, how do I create these values? And you just have to come up with a little mathematical formula here. So I can simplify this quite a bit more. If I get rid of all these, you know, if I get rid of all these curly braces, even more so. And what I can do is I can just say here, if, uh, well, I guess maybe not. I'll say, okay, I'll take, I'll get an iterator out of this. 
And I will say uh, map iterator found equals. And what I will do here is I'm going to look for inside of here. Let me just, I just don't recall if there's a find function specifically in. Yep, there's a find function specifically in here. And const other, const other, const other, const int. This is the one I'm looking for here I, because I want it because the key is the int value. And then it'll give me, it'll, if it can find it, say if it finds it, it will give me the, the, va the, the, the result value here. It'll give me the iterator which, with the key value pair. But if it can't find it, it'll basically give me a null pointer or just uh, nothing. Or just, and I think it gives me end iterator. And so what I can do here is I can say, give me a find, and I can just say a times 100 plus b times 10 plus c, right? And so that takes the first digit, the, that whatever the l value is, makes that 100, the 100's digit. Whatever the b is, makes that the 10's digit. And then whatever c is, makes that the, the 1's digit. So I get a three-digit number that I, can, that I can apply. And what I can say here is if found, and so it will, you know, does not equal, uh, and forgive me if there's a better way to do this, I'm already kind of stumbling here because I'm just trying to talk and think and do at the same time. So if found does not equal winners.end, then you can say uh, wins plus equals, and you could say winner, oh no, found. Can I use a dot? Nope, I can use an arrow though because it's a pointer, it's an iterator, and I can say give me the second value. And so this is the more, the more better way to do things. And I think you end up with the same result. You better get the same result here, and you do, you know, 89.0145%. And say this is a better result because if I, if I went ahead and I just said something like this, wins plus equals uh, not even found here, and just say winners, and now I'll, I have to do that one more time here, of this, you're like, okay, that's, that, there's not a lot of code there. You get the same result a third time here. You get the same result, but now, let me just go here and put a breakpoint in here after we're done with everything. And now with this method, what's, what happens before I print here, I hit this, the winners is now huge. Instead of being 15 sized, now it is 125 sized, and now there are a ton of zeros in there. Maybe you want that, but you probably don't because that just that just slows down every, it slows down the search. It's a lot easier to search uh, a 15 element map than it is to, to anything larger. So this because that's just one of the rules of C++ and the, the rules of the map data structure in C++ is that if I if I access something like this and I can't find it in the map. It'll turn. It'll it'll add that element to the map, and it'll add a zero, the default value for the the value of the key, and so you say it simplifies the code. It really does, right? If I get rid of all these extra, oops, I need that one. But if I get rid of all these other things, like it simplifies the code base, but it's not perfect because it still adds a whole ton of stuff. And I and at the end of the day, I get the result I'm looking. Okay, so the last part of this then is now that I have this thing working, now it's to, to tinker and experiment and come up with results that, uh, that we basically don't know anything about. So this says don't change any of the winners. So I don't have to change any of the, the if statements or the map here. But I do have to modify the reals so that this is, I'm just going to reduce this down to 22 each like it says. And now I'm going to run this and I should get 10,000 something for the result. And I do, there's, there's 10,648 combinations when I multiply 12 times 12 times, or 22 times 22 times 22, there we go there. And now, so I, I don't have to do that anymore, but I do now have to get a result between, where is it here, 88.50 and 89%. So I'm just going to tinker with the numbers, the symbols on the reels themselves. So where am I at right now? I'm at 82%. So I just have to tinker with now, now I have to tinker around and just change things around until I'm, I find, you know, I, I can find out and get myself up to 88.5%. So that, putting a one, changing a two into a one is changing that and tinkering with it. And to say, it, it's some, it might take a while. 
there's 80. So just, and if I add another five to this, what do we get? We get 88. Oh, there we go. I did it. It only took a couple tries here. So but just by making a couple little changes to the reels, now I get a result that's 88.80%, and that's in my range of 88.5 to 89%. So it's just, it, you know, and this, that's what mathematicians do. They basically take the designer, what they want to do for a math model, and then they go ahead and create a math model and try, and then basically try to turn it into, you know, try to turn it into something uh, fun for the player. So at this point, we don't know. There, there are definitely more things we could do to determine how many spins win, like what, you know, what is the volatility, all these extra different statistical things we can look into to see that the player uh, is going to have the, the most fun experience that we can, or you know, whatever, keep them playing the longest that we can. So that covers everything I wanted to talk about in that assignment. So as always, if you have any questions, swordb at cod.edu is a great way of getting a hold of me. But as one student uh, in this course is fond of doing, I have no problem with you uh, texting me and sending me messages down in the YouTube channel here, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So as always, thanks for sticking it out, and we'll see you next time.